Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to talk about a subject that's not really sexy, you probably don't want to think about it too much, but it's extremely important and that's de-essing. So on this video I'm going to show you how to properly de-ess your vocals, how to do it right and how to do it super fast in Cubase. Okay, so let's talk about de-essing for a second. What is de-essing to begin with? For those of you that you don't know, de-essing is basically the process of reducing the sibilance out of your vocals, right? And it can also be applied to stuff like cymbals, uh, like hi-hats or crash cymbals, stuff like this. On vocals, it's consonants mainly, like S or F, basically things that nobody gets right when you're on a phone call. They're all under the umbrella of sibilance, like T's, tss, 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 you know, all these things. De-essing can basically determine if a vocal sounds professional or if it sounds like a demo or if it sounds badly mixed. So it's extremely important and I cannot stress enough how much attention you should pay to sibilance when you're mixing vocals, right? This can make or break your vocals. Now, what we're trying to do here with de is to tame those S's. We don't want to completely destroy them. We don't want to turn them down so much so that the singer sounds like they're lisping, right? We want to make them sound natural. Especially now, we are very blessed to have very affordable microphones. There are some amazing microphones for $100. You know, you pay 100 bucks and you get a very, very nice microphone. These microphones, uh, you know, when they are lower budget microphones, they tend to be very hyped on the top end, right? So you get a lot of sibilance. So de is very, very important. There are quite a few de plugins and uh, they do a great job, a great job, right? Here I have my favorite ones. Let me show you. I'm going to give you all my favorite plugins and uh, I'm, I'm probably forgetting some, but to be honest with you, these are the ones that I use the most. The Cubase de the stock de is really, really good, surprisingly good, you know. Sometimes I was uh, also forgetting how good it is and I wasn't really using it, but there was an update for this plugin and it really sounds great now. And I will play some vocals through them so you can hear how they sound, but I'm not gonna dwell too much on the plugins on this video. The second one is Aosis de uh, and it's a brilliant de very, very nice, very natural. And the third one is the Vice de from Softube. Again, very natural, very transparent. So let me play some vocals through this de and let's see what they sound. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. Can we fantasize what's behind the wall? Okay. Very bright vocals, I actually turned them a little bit brighter so that you can hear how they sound. But basically, the problem with S's is that they only creep out when you start adding compression, when you start adding EQ, when you start adding saturation. And these are all things, guess what, that you will end up doing on your vocals. So the earlier you tame those S's, the better because they will creep out even if they don't sound so bad at first. So don't think, oh, I recorded a vocal, I don't need to DS because it sounds great. When you start adding compression, parallel compression, EQ, all these things, these S's will pop out and will sound bad. So, I mean, I have these DS's on the lead vocal. Let me add the Cubase DS first. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. Can we fantasize what's behind the wall? Okay. Great, let's listen to the Aosis de now. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. Can we fantasize what's behind the wall? Very nice, very natural. I love this de it's very good. Now let's try the Vice. The wall, I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. As you can tell, they all have 
a sound, right? They all tamed the frequencies in a slightly different way and they all work great. You can't go wrong with any of these de-essers, but I haven't seen any de-esser that can actually tame all the sibilants that you threw at them uh, in a 100% natural way. Every professional mixer will tell you that the best way to DS your vocals is to do it manually. And why is that? Vocals is the main thing in your song, right? It's one of the main elements, the most important element maybe sometimes. You want to give them as much attention as possible right? Don't leave anything to, you know, just, well, it might work, you know, the DSR might catch this. It might catch this, but it might not catch everything, right? So, like with compression, DSRs work better if you feed them manageable material. If you give them a vocal that's super sibilant, super sibilant, <laughs> they will try to do the job, but there's a limit, right? So the pro way to do your DSing is to do it manually. And this takes time. This is a laborious task. There is a way around it. Or is there? Well, there is a way around it. In Cubase, there is a way around for pretty much everything. Because we have the macros, we have the logical editor. So I'm going to show you my own personal way that I DS vocals in Cubase. Okay, let's take this vocal as an example. Face like this in paradise. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. Okay, the, the S's are too loud, right? Too, too loud. I know that this is going to be a problem. And it becomes even more amplified if you have multiple vocals, like vocal harmonies, like we have here, and all the takes have S's. See? I, I wanna know if there's a this is for all the vocals, they add up. Especially with pop music, when you have harmonies, this can become a big problem. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see. So, if you're using another DAW, the procedure is exactly what I'm going to show you right now. To begin with, at some point, through experience, you will learn to identify the S's just by looking at them. You don't need to listen, right? They are so obvious. For example, in this case, I don't even need to know where the, I don't even need to listen this vocal to know where the S's are, right? Let me show you. I'm going to scroll, 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 scroll. Ah, there's an S, see? That's an S, I can tell that's an S. I don't, I haven't listened to it, let's see. There's a face. See, there is a face. Okay, this is an S. So I have to tame this. Usually, what you would do normally, you would grab your range selection tool, select this, shift X, and then turn down the volume. How much? It depends. That's where you have to listen, right? I tend to go for minus 6 dBs, okay? And do this for every S, okay? I can see where the S's are, straight away. Let's see. Let's find the next S. Here's the, the next S, okay? Shift X, shift X. Boom. Okay? That's what most professional mixers do in their DAWs, okay? You know, you can tell it looks like a noise waveform. It doesn't look like, you know, this is a pitch sound. I can see that. This is noise, you know, it's very easy to identify. This will take a little bit of time. If you're working in another DAW, that's the way to do it. Now, if you're using Cubase, I'm going to show you a better way to do this. and. To be honest with you, this is like a spin uh, of Greg Ondo's trick that he showed on a video a while ago about how to deep breath your vocals, right? Because it's exactly the same problem. So, I'm going to show you how I do this. Let me show you how quick it is, okay? I'm going to find the S's. Let's find an S now. I mean, I've corrected this one. Let's go for this one. Let's go for that one, okay? Let's listen. Okay, this one, this S here, select it, and now I'm going to use a macro command, and I have a shortcut for this, it's Control alt d or on the Mac I'm using Command-Alt-D, so check it out, select this one, boom, one click, right, this one, let's do the backing vocals, boom, boom, 
boom, boom, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. I corrected all these vocals in a few seconds. Right. Now let me show you, let me show you how you do this. Okay. Feel free to copy this. Uh, you don't need to know exactly how you do it and all the mechanics behind it. But all you need to do is go to edit, key commands, okay? And here you will find our key commands. Now, what have I done? I have a key command, a macro actually, that I call DS, right? And that's why my shortcut, I set it as control alt D for DS, right? I remember it like that. So, here are the actions that you need to add to this command. You grab your rain selection tool and you select your S. Then, what does Cubase need to do? It needs to set the locators to this selection. That's the option. Then you need to edit the split range, so it cuts. It separates the S from the rest of the audio. Then, it edits the event under cursor, and you nudge one frame, just in case, so that basically the cursor moves and it grabs that S that you want, right? And then you do multiple times decrement event volume. This drops the volume one dB per time, okay? So in my case, for S's, I found that one, two, three, four, five, six, six dBs works really great. Now, if you want to do it again, you just hit the command again and you get six more dBs, no problem. So let me show you how you can create this macro, right? I'm, go I'm not going to do the entire procedure, but you will get the point. I'm going to start and you will see how it works. So when you go to Cubase, create a new macro here, see? New macro. Okay, and I'm going to call it test. All right, now in this macro, I have to start adding commands and all the commands are here, okay? right here. So let's see, if I wanted to replicate this, I'm showing this to you, pause the video, go into Cubase and find all these commands. How? Let me show you. Uh, so the first command is transport locators to selection. Okay, let's go here and search for locators to selection. Okay, search. There we go. So now we add this command. Boom. Okay, see, it's there. Now the next is edit split range. Let's go here, split range. You don't need to type the whole thing. There we go. Okay, split range, add. And so on and so forth until you have the entire string of commands. Now once you do this, you will probably need to add a nice shortcut for this. And the way to do this is you go here to macro, Okay, see, under your commands. And let's say this is my test. I'm going to assign a keystroke. Let's say command old um, O, whatever. And you assign this. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Just copy the settings and you'll be fine. I can DS my vocal with such precision and it will sound so much better than just slapping a de-esser, this will also sound more natural, okay? That's why I'm adding just 6 dB, because it. I don't need more, I just want to have control. So you might want to add just 3 and just do it multiple times, but that's the best way by far to do de-essing, okay? And see how quickly I can move, like this. Of course, I'm using the Slim Blade as well, which is a great way to do editing. This S is here, you know, command all d Command-Alt-D, 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 there we go. Easy peasy. It's actually kind of enjoyable. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a quick edit and then I'm going to play it before and after, right? Let's do this. Let's listen to it without the manual DSing. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. Can we fantasize what's behind the wall? All right, and now let me do the manual DSing and let's play it again. I wanna know if there's a face like this in paradise. 
Can we fantasize what's behind the wall? Okay, so it doesn't sound like my vocals are lisping. It sounds natural. And of course, I did a very quick and dirty job here. I would go ahead and listen while I was doing this. I did it almost without listening. But you can be absolutely sure that it's going to give you a really, really nice result. Now, what you might or might not want to do is you might want to do crossfades. You can also add this to the macro, but I found that with Cubase, I never run into problems when doing this procedure, especially when I have snap to zero crossing activated. But the crossfading part is the easy part because you can actually select all your files like this, all your events and just press X and Cubase does this for you. You don't need to stress about it. You mean you can do this, but that's what I do. I just go and do crossfade like that if I need to. So that's how you DS like a pro in Cubase. And I would totally suggest that, that you do this for DSing, for deep breathing, uh, for, you know, denoising your vocals. It's one of the things that give away an amateurish mix compared to a mix done by a professional. DSing, cleaning up your vocals, uh, you know, doing all these things manually. It's a labor that comes through love for your material and your craft and, you know, your music. It's your music we're talking about. You don't want to leave your vocals, uh, you know, at the mercy of a DSer. You know, like you don't want to have super dynamic vocals and leave them to the mercy of a compressor, you know? It's not the same. We're humans. We do things better than, you know, machines for now. Sometimes. Well, not really. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I know this is not a, you know, you know, one click thing, but it is a one click command that you can do this very quickly where other people in a different system will be still on the first vocal you will have done all the vocals already so hit a thumbs up if you enjoyed this subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already i'd really like to see you back and share this with any cubase user or any other dough user that they want to make their vocals sound a little bit more professional that's all for now guys i'll see you in the next one bye bye